When building solutions using Azure Databricks, it is critical to remember that you need to secure your credentials in the code. Today, I will show you how to do it using something called Secret Scope. Stay tuned. So what are those secret scopes? First and foremost, they are secure storage for your credential and sensitive information on your application, but also they are considered a logical container to separate your credentials and that information into groups. Why would you use secret scopes? Well, because if you have code like this, it's very bad. And it's bad because you have access key in your code. Storing credentials directly in your code is very bad practice in terms of security and just management. And with secret scopes, you get access to DB Utility Secrets library, which allows you to get your secrets in a very secure way. It also allows you to secure other things like account names so that your code can be moved between environments without changing anything. You just replace the scopes, replace the values, and you're ready to migrate to another environment. How does it work? It's actually quite simple. Each Databricks environment, each workspace, have a something called secret scope. Within that scope, you can contain one or more secrets, and you also can have multiple secret scopes. There are two ways that secret scopes can be managed. One of them is internal database that is within Databricks, and a second of is Key Vault. So you can use Azure Key Vault service to encrypt that for you. This is of course much better in terms of management of those keys because you can share keys across Databricks environments and you can centrally change them instead of requiring you to go to Databricks and change them manually on the database. And additionally, secret scopes have an, something called access control list. And those control lists are on a secret scope level. So you can assign different people and different groups to different scopes so that they can only access the secrets that they need for the current task. And you can actually choose whenever each secret scope is backed by Key Vault or by database. But my recommendation is always use Key Vault if you have an access to it. So just to summarize, you have Databricks backed. Those have have to be actually managed through Databricks CLI, but and they are fully encrypted and managed through that internal database. But the recommended way is through Key Vault, but the management changes a little bit because you will need to use Workspace to create the scopes, CLI to manage some of the things like deleting the scopes, and Azure Portal because of course Key Vault is in Azure Portal, so you need to manage your keys there. But it's still encrypted and stored by Key Vault and therefore recommended. And there are three levels of permission that you can assign for each secret scope. Manage to manage everything about the secret scope, including ACLs, write to only manage the secret scope keys, and read only to read the values. So just manage this properly within your teams. An important note, first of all, if you need granular permission, you require premium plan for Databricks. That's quite important when planning the costs for Databricks. Additionally, you should separate scopes per audience, as I said. It's for you, it's a logical container for you to manage your credentials better. Additionally, some things can only be done through CLI, like deleting of scopes, reading key values, etc., etc. So make sure to install that CLI. And most of the features we're talking about are version 4.0 and above, and some of those are only 6.0 and above but we're not covering those 6.0 and above today. But you should remember always to get your runtime as up-to-date as possible. And lastly, when using secret scopes, when your secrets will be used in a code, the notebook output will be redacted. So do not expose accidentally your credentials, but it is not a security measure. If you should consider that if your developer or operations person has an access to a secret scope, they can very easily get this value. So just make sure to know that. And what are the demos for today? I'm going to show you how to manage secret scopes using Databricks CLI. Then I'm going to show you how to create and manage secrets. Then I'm going to show you how to use those secrets within the notebooks, how to call these Databricks utilities. And lastly, I'm going to show you how easy it is to switch from the internal database baked in security scopes to the ones used by Azure Key Vault. So let's go into the portal. For this demo, I prepared two things. I will go to my resource group right now, into my Azure for Everyone Databricks secret scopes. And here I have a Azure Databricks service, but also if I'm gonna refresh, I also have a storage account. 
So I'm going to use the storage account to connect from Databricks and load some data to prove you the secret scope are working fine in the later demo. So right now I'm going to go to Azure Databricks and launch Workspace. On this workspace, I already did one thing. I very quickly created a simple cluster. It's just out of the box cluster. Nothing fancy was done here. So I can actually show you that cluster. It's currently called my cluster running two nodes and a standard configuration in runtime 6.1. Besides this, this is pretty much the fresh Databricks environment. So that what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna go to CLI. And in CLI, you need to first login and authenticate. You can do it through Databricks CLI. To do it, you can just type Databricks and dash help to get the options that you can do. If you need to install this, you can actually install this through Python because this is a Python library. And to do so, you just type pip3 install Databricks CLI. But once you have it installed, you actually need to authenticate. And the first way to authenticate, you need to use a command called Databricks configured dash dash token. And it will prompt you to provide a token. And to get a token, you need to go back to your workspace, click on this account icon here, click on the user settings, hit generate token. This will generate new access token for your environment. I'm gonna call mine CLI. Right now, since this is the demo, I'm gonna give it a lifetime on only one day. I'm gonna hit generate. And right now I'm getting a valid token that is valid for one day and I can authenticate from the CLI. So I'm going to copy this and hit done. You cannot retrieve it later on, so make sure to save it. Go back to CLI and press enter for the command. And it asks you, what is the Databricks host? Okay, so to get the Databricks host, you pretty much need the URL of Databricks. The easiest to get it is to just to get it from the browser URL. So this is this part, West Europe, Azure Databricks.net. Okay, and paste it into the command line. The next you need a token. Since you copied the token, you can actually paste it now. And press enter. With this, your Databricks CLI can now authenticate and run the commands. To validate that this works, simply run a command like Databricks secret list scopes. You currently don't have any scopes, this will list nothing, but it will at least validate the connectivity. So press enter, and as you see, we have no scopes. Now that we don't have any scope, we can actually create one. And to do so, you use a command called Databricks Secrets Create a Scope and provide a scope name parameter. I'm gonna call mine my blob. I'm gonna press enter, and this will create a new scope called my blob. Since it doesn't give any output, I should like to run list scopes again to notify and see what are the results. As you see, we have now a scope called my blob, a backend is Databricks, so this is an internal Databricks database, and we can start creating new. In order to create a new secret, you need the command Databricks secrets put to create a new one, provide a scope name and a key name. So let's actually remove this part and call it again my blob because we're adding to our existing scope and a key name. I'm gonna call it access key. Press enter. And right now what will be popped up is this notepad. It looks very weird because it's actually very important to understand, but Databricks saves those locally in text files so it can actually manage and upload those to Databricks later on. But it's rem remember that those are there. So what you need to do in this file is basically paste the access key. So you need to go back to the portal and go back to your storage account, go to the resource group, open the storage account and copy the access key from here. Copy to clipboard, go back to this file, paste it in here, save the file and close it. And this was it. We just created a new secret. If you want to list the secrets, simply use the command Databricks secrets list and my blob scope. As you see, we have now one secret. And it is as simple as it gets. This is how you create new secrets and new secret scopes. Once you do it, you can actually go back to your Databricks environment 
and start creating notebooks which will leverage those secrets. So let's go to workspace. Let's go to users, my personal workspace, right click, hit create notebook. In this case, I'm going to use Scala and I call the notebook demo. Hit create. And right now we can type a code. And to do it, simply paste in the command blob access key equals dbutil secret get paste in the scope name. In our case, it's my blob and paste the key name, which is access key. Press control enter to run the command and you should see the output. As you see, interesting, it was reducted. So you don't see actual value. In normal case, when you would use insecure way and you would run it, you would see the value. In case of secrets, you get it reducted out. Also, if you want to check who has access to your secret scopes, simply run a command, Databricks, secrets, list ACLs and provide a scope name. In this case, it's again my blob. Press enter and we're going to see result that currently I can manage because I'm the owner of the workspace and I created this secret. If you want to manage the secrets and give someone an access, simply run a command like this. Databricks, secrets, put ACL, scope, and then provide the principal name. This is the Azure Active Directory username and provide the permission. But for this, you actually need premium capacity. So remember about that. Go back to the portal and let's perform a demo where I'm going to read something from the blob storage. So I'm going to add a little bit of code which initializes two more values, a storage account name, a container name, and additionally a file name, which I'm going to read. It's going to be a simple CSV file. To do that, I'm going to go back to the portal to my storage account, go to overview, do the containers, create new container called demo, hit OK, open demo container, and upload very quickly a small movie CSV file. Hit open, upload, and we're done. Now we can actually go back to the Databricks and replace the values. So we need a storage account name. So to get storage account name, we need to go back here and actually copy this AM demo storage. That's our storage account name. We also need a container name. I know it's called demo because I just created it. We need a file name that's movies CSV. If this Databricks key works, we're gonna at the very end get display data using the stored secret value. And as you see, movies load successfully and it was as easy as that to secure our code using Databricks secret scopes. And for the last demo, I'm going to show you how to move that from actually internal database to Azure Key Vault. And it's actually quite straightforward. First of all, you need to access a secret management page. And it's actually quite also secret because there's no UI and no button here to do that. You actually need to paste hash secrets create scope into the URL of your Databricks. In here, I'm going to create a new scope called my blob key vault. I'm gonna set myself as a creator to get the full permissions. I need to supply key vault parameters, TNS name and a resource ID. And to do that, I'm gonna go back to the portal, open the resource group, and I need to create a key vault. So let's create one very quickly. Key vault, hit OK, hit create, provided a resource group, provided a name, am key vault demo. Looks like it's available. I have everything in West Europe in this case. So I'm going to use West Europe and I'm going to leave pricing default tier as standard and hit create. Let's wait for the deployment. Once the deployment finished, go to the resource and look again, what does the Databricks require? First of all, they require the DNS name and the resource ID. The easiest way to get it is just go to the key vault, go to the properties blade, copy the value of the DNS name into Databricks scope and do pretty much the same with the resource ID. Copy that into resource ID 
and hit create. Once the scope was successfully created, you can actually verify two things. First of all, if you're gonna go back to your key vault, into the access policies, you will notice your Azure Databricks being added there as an application which can manage all the keys and it can only get and list keys. Therefore, you no longer can manage your keys for the secret score from the Databricks. You actually have to do it here from the secrets panel. Now, the second thing that you can verify is going to the CLI and listing the scopes. Go back to the comment and grab Databricks secret list scopes. You'll notice now you have two Databricks scopes. One is backed by Databricks database and a second one by Azure Key Vault. Let's go back to the portal. Let's go to Databricks and let's change the notebook to use the new Key Vault. But before we do that, we need to establish a new key. Go to the secrets in the Key Vault and need to create a new secret. You need to provide it a name. So my will be called access key. I need to provide a value. For that, of course, I'm gonna go in a new tab into our resource group, go to the storage account, go to the access keys, grab the access key and paste it as a key vault value and hit create. So now we have an access key in a key vault and we can go back to our Databricks, go to the recent notebook and now simply change the scope name to my blob key vault, press enter. And now your Databricks is running using Key Vault as a backend encryption service for your secrets, successfully loading the data. It's as easy as it gets. With Azure Key Vault and Secret Scopes, it's so easy to manage credentials and environment variables for your environment. But it's not stopping there. You always need to take care of security for your applications. That's it for today. If you liked the video, hit thumbs up. Leave a comment if you want to ask a question or provide a feedback. Subscribe if you want to see more and see you next time.